When it comes to building a sturdy and reliable stair landing, the classic framed wall method stands out as one of the most popular and arguably the best choice. And here are a few reasons why. Number one, framed walls usually provide an excellent framework that can easily support the weight of the landing, people, and any furniture or other objects placed on it. This is especially important for landings that experience heavy traffic in commercial or industrial buildings. The walls also distribute the weight of the landing more evenly across the foundation, preventing structural load concentration concentration and potential sagging or failure. Also, make sure that your walls are spaced correctly to provide adequate spans for the correct size joist and make sure that you use the correct thickness of plywood according to the on-center spacing of the platform or landing joist. Another benefit to this method, if it works for your project, will be that they can easily be configured to accommodate various landing sizes and shapes, making them suitable for a wide range of staircase designs. In this video, I will be providing you with estimated ratios, because to achieve precise PSI requires careful measurement, consistent material quality, proper mixing techniques, and curing conditions. And let's not forget that some projects will require you to consult a concrete professional or an engineer. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. And first on the list is that we need to make sure that you understand what a part is. And this is going to refer to any unit of measurement, like a shovel or a bucket, as long as it's going to be consistent for all ingredients. As far as water is concerned, you need to remember that the amount of water significantly affects concrete strength. So use the least amount of water possible to achieve a workable mix. As far as gravel size goes, generally the maximum gravel size is going to be an inch. However, the most common is going to be three quarters of an inch. And the size and shape of the gravel can also affect the concrete strength. And let's not forget that proper curing is essential for achieving the desired strength. So keep the concrete moist for at least the first seven days. Next up, let's take a look at a 2500 PSI mix. That's going to be one part cement, three parts sand, four parts gravel. And you're going to use 5.5 gallons of water per 94 pound bag of cement. And as far as a 3000 PSI mix goes, we're going to reduce the amount of gravel to three parts and reduce the amount of water to five gallons. And for a 4000 PSI mix, we're going to go with one part cement, two parts sand, three parts gravel, and 4.5 gallons of water per 94 pound bag or sack of cement. So it isn't too difficult to figure out that a little less water and a little more cement is going to create stronger mixtures. However, at the same time, a little more water can make the concrete a lot easier to work with. Here is a video that I made trying to help someone who might have suggested that they want to see this. For example, sometimes it's difficult for me to figure out what somebody wants when they don't provide very many details. So in this video, I am going to explain why you could probably do this, but you're not going to be able to do this. However, you could probably do this. So let's go ahead and start with the basic design here for those of you who don't know what a 45 degree angle might look like. And to make a 45 degree angle, just draw a square box and then draw a line from this point to this point. And that's going to give us a shape like this. And then we can take this shape here and put it over here to get started with our stairway layout. And of course, there are plenty of other ways to create a 45 degree angle. So I believe the video that the individual watched was for a stairway design that looked like this. And that is going to look like this one over here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. We basically just have a landing that might be considered a step because this right here won't meet the minimum building codes for a landing, which is going to be 36 inches by 36 inches minimum. 
And of course, you will need to check with your local building department to verify whether or not you can do this right here. And you might be able to. So if you want to build a stairway like this, where we're just going to add another step by connecting this corner to this corner, and that's going to look something like this over here. And the problem with this one here is that we might not have the minimum walk line depth. And that's usually going to be 9, 10, or 11 inches, depending upon what the stairway is going to be used for. So if we need a little more room here so that we can create enough room for someone to actually put their foot on, then we're probably going to need to do something like this. And that would be to simply extend this section of the landing or two steps to create enough room for the stair walk line. The walk line is usually going to be a line that runs parallel to the inside of the stairway or the shortest distance of the stairway, which would be over here. And it will be 12 inches away from this line here. I do have other videos on that. I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it in this video because I've probably done at least 10 or 20 videos about a building walk line. So not too difficult and I hope it helps. And like I said, don't forget to check with your local building and safety department because they're going to have the final say on what type of design you're going to be able to use to design a stairway with a 45 degree angle or multiple steps. Enhanced spatial flow is a design concept that emphasizes the seamless movement and connection between different areas within a space. This approach is particularly effective in modern and minimalist designs where the goal is to create an open and inviting atmosphere. One of the most striking features of enhanced spatial flow is the use of continuous staircases. These staircases serve as a central element that connects different levels while maintaining an open feel. This design choice encourages a sense of openness, making the space feel more expansive and inviting. The sense of openness created by enhanced spatial flow also impacts the psychological experience of the occupants. When spaces are designed with visual continuity in mind, individuals feel less confined and more connected to their surroundings. This can lead to increased comfort and a more enjoyable experience within the space. Visual continuity is a crucial aspect of enhanced spatial flow. It refers to the way different elements within a space relate to one another, creating a cohesive look and feel. This can be achieved through the use of consistent materials, colors, and design motifs that guide the eye throughout the space. In conclusion, enhanced spatial flow is a powerful design strategy that transforms the way we experience spaces. By incorporating continuous staircases and emphasizing visual continuity, designers can create environments that feel larger, more open, and more inviting. Here is another viewer requested video. They're having problems laying out the stair stringer for this situation here. And I think the best way I could make sense out of this is to always remember, if you have the lower floor and the upper floor, and you measure the distance, this is your total rise. And then when I divide the amount of risers into that number, and that gives me, for example, seven and a quarter inches, which is what we have here. Well, that number is always going to represent the top of the finished step. So keep that in mind while we're watching the video here. Let's go ahead and throw some numbers in here. Seven and a quarter, seven and a quarter are individual riser height. And since we're using three quarter inch materials here, we're going to subtract three quarters of an inch off of the bottom of the stair stringer so that we can attach it to the floor and then end up with a seven and a quarter inch riser height. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and head up to the top where we're going to have the same thing all the way up to the top. And since we're using the same materials for the floor sheathing, then everything should work out just fine. No problem here. But that's not going to be the case if we change the height of the floor sheathing to inch and an eighth plywood. And I think this is the problem that the individual was having. So if I just simply added an inch and an eighth plywood to the top of this without lowering the height of the landing and the top of the stringer, then I'm going to end up with a taller riser here. So let's take a look at these numbers over here. Four foot two, four foot three and an eighth. And this is the measurement from the top of the floor to the top of the floor. 
and this is a measurement to the top of the joist. So all I need to do to correct this will be to lay out my stringers in the same way going all the way up the stringer seven and a quarter inches until I get to the top. And that's when we will subtract the three-eighths of an inch difference from this distance on our stringer layout. So seven and a quarter going all the way up until we get to this measurement here. And if we look over here, we're going to need to lower the floor height to make this work also. So again, I'm not going to have any problems as long as I understand that the top of the step and the top of the floor needs to represent each section of the individual riser. So for example, if I wanted to have a two inch tread here, then I would just simply adjust for it in the stringer. If I wanted to have a thicker tread and a thinner floor sheathing, then I'm going to adjust for it in the stringer. When it comes to constructing concrete stairs, you have two primary options, pour them in multiple sections or opt for a single monolithic pour. While both methods result in functional stairs, a monolithic pour offers a range of advantages that make it the superior choice for many projects. Let's explore why. 1. Enhanced strength and durability. Seamless construction, a monolithic pour eliminates joints between steps, which are inherent weak points in multi-pour stairs. These joints are susceptible to cracking, chipping, and water damage over time. A single pour creates a continuous, unified structure, significantly enhancing overall strength and durability. Superior load distribution, with a monolithic pour, the load is distributed evenly across the entire structure. This is crucial for stairs, which experience concentrated stress at various points. A unified pour minimizes the risk of localized failures and ensures long-term stability. 2. Improved aesthetics. Clean and modern look, monolithic stairs have a sleek, uninterrupted appearance. The absence of joints creates a smooth, continuous flow that complements modern architectural styles. Design flexibility, a single pour allows for greater design freedom. You can achieve complex shapes, curves, and cantilevered designs with more ease than with segmented construction. 3. Efficiency and cost-effectiveness. Reduced labor costs, while the initial formwork might be more complex, a monolithic pour ultimately reduces labor time. You eliminate the need for multiple setups, concrete deliveries, and finishing work associated with multiple pours. Faster construction, a single pour significantly speeds up the construction process. This minimizes project timelines and allows for quicker completion. 4. Minimized maintenance. Reduced cracking and damage. The absence of joints minimizes the risk of cracking and water damage, which are common maintenance issues in multi-pour stairs. The smooth, continuous surface of monolithic stairs is easier to clean and maintain than stairs with multiple joints and crevices. 5. Enhanced safety. A monolithic pour creates a uniform, level surface, reducing the risk of tripping hazards that can occur with uneven settlement in multi-pour stairs. The superior strength and stability of a monolithic pour enhance overall safety, providing a secure and reliable structure for years to come. While a monolithic pour might present some initial challenges in terms of formwork complexity, the long-term benefits outweigh the initial effort. By prioritizing strength, durability, aesthetics, and efficiency, a monolithic pour is undoubtedly the superior choice for constructing concrete stairs in most scenarios. In the world of small home design, maximizing every inch is paramount. Builders and architects are constantly seeking creative solutions to optimize space without sacrificing functionality or aesthetics. And one of those things is going to be a stair landing. Imagine a typical staircase with a landing midway. This landing, depending on its size and shape, could easily claim 8 to 12 square feet or more of your living area. And this means every square foot dedicated to a landing is a square foot that cannot be used for something else. Could that space be used for a built-in bookshelf, cozy reading nook, maybe making another room larger, or even a small kitchen pantry? In a small house where every square inch matters, you need to think about this. And of course, there are plenty of other exceptions. There are going to be reasons why you're going to need to use a stair landing. And if that happens, try to incorporate any possible storage solutions you could come up with underneath that landing to maximize its functionality and offset the space it's consuming. In other words, you should critically assess the necessity of a stair landing and always explore other space-saving alternatives whenever possible. By exploring these creative alternatives and prioritizing efficient design, 
You can create functional and aesthetically pleasing staircases that optimize space in smaller homes. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.